Hey guys, welcome to Premiere Basics, a weekly series where we teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. And today I'm going to edit or enhance your shots, your footage. So I have asked you guys on the YouTube community page to send in your footage to email address hello at premierbasics.net and you guys did that. So I'm first gonna have a look at the comment section real quick and then we're gonna get started um, on your footage, of course. <clears throat> now let's see. Um, Someone has been waiting for three hours. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for the dedication. Thank you for checking out our channel and our content, of course. When I change the speed of a clip, I keep the audio pitch original option. It becomes echo. Any fix for that? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't had that problem before with the echo of your audio shifting. Um, maybe you can try the de reverb effect. Um, or just play around with the reverb options or de reverb options in the essential sound panel. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys have some uh, new footage to send me, uh, I'll really open up my email real quick. That way, you guys can send me your footage if you still have some. Uh, let me check. Let's go to our email. And I need to log in. Let me see right here. Here we go. That's all right. Okay. No new emails yet. Okay. Uh, okay, let's have a look, guys. Should I upgrade to Premiere Pro 2021? Um, I wouldn't recommend upgrading just yet. There are still some issues that I have experienced with the new Premiere. Um, so actually, I would wait just like maybe a month or so. Uh, that way they can fix some of the new issues that uh, that are currently occurring and that that way you won't have any issues when you finally decide to upgrade hi from south africa hi from nepal well hello to everyone of course let me check you're editing a photo cool uh, what kind of photo are you editing did I get your clips? Yes, Sammy Tube, I received your clips. Um, love your channel, thank you so much. Okay, guys, let's get started. So, uh, first I have to change the view, of course. Here we go, this is Premiere Pro. So I've already dragged all of the footage that I've received into Premiere Pro. I played around with it, put some effects on it. Um, it's not gonna be a global edit. Um, the footage was a bit to random to gather everything at once and make a cool video with all of it together because there wasn't really a, a theme that was in all of the footage. But it's no problem at all. Um, so I just enhanced each shot the way I would do it or, or maybe put some effects in there. And I'm gonna show you guys what I did and then we're gonna um, see how I did it. So I will go back to the basics of the raw footage and change everything to the way that I made it before. So I'm gonna start off, um, this is completely random by the way, I just selected all the shots and put them in the timeline, so the order is completely random. So I can't say which uh, shot is going first or which shot is going next, so um, let's just have a quick look. Now I'm first gonna look at the um, comment section real quick, just give me a second guys. Um, what is the email address? Well, I pinned it in the comment section below in the live chat. So you can uh, send your footage to hello at premierbasics.net. Not .com, not something else, just .net at the end. Um, why don't you make the Harry Potter expect a Patronum? Because that's gonna be for a tutorial probably next year. Not sure yet, but probably next year. When you reacted to my comment, I screen recorded. <laughs> nice to hear that, man, nice to hear that. Okay, so let's get started. The first shot here, um, sorry guys, I forgot all of the names of the people that sent me footage. So if this is your shot, leave a comment in the live chat and that way everyone, everyone knows that this is your shot. So let's have a look. So this shot, I'm first gonna deactivate my effect here, was just a guy sleeping on the couch he hears a noise, he makes a movement above his cell phone, and then he smacks it. 
Um, now, I think the idea of this guy was to create some kind of hologram or something coming out of his cell phone, uh, like an alarm clock or something. So what I did was, let me show you real quick. I hope everything plays back normally because there's a red line here. Otherwise, I'll need to render it. So yeah, as you can see, wait, let me see if I can enlarge this for you guys. Yeah, something like this. Hope you guys see it well. So what I first did was I made an animation. It says, wake up, it's kind of an alarm. He swipes it away, then the time comes on. He realizes, oh my God, it's so early in the morning. Then it smacks it off, okay? Um, so real quick, my initial idea was to create some kind of hologram. Now I've made the hologram tutorial about, I don't know, two weeks ago, I think, um, and it's quite heavy to make that effect. So I wasn't going for the entire hologram effect or look. I just wanted to create something that looked a bit more sci-fi, um, but also had a fun animation in it. Now, um, this is a good shot. It's, it's clean, but what I would have preferred was a little bit more um, space here on the bottom. That way it could create a little bit more depth because you know now um, the uh, effect sticks a little bit to the bottom of the entire clip. But um, other than that, no no problems at all with this shot. I mean, it's a clean shot, it's really good. I haven't even color graded it, it's just a raw shot. So let me check what I did here. Okay, I'm first gonna ac um, enable all of these tracks and we're gonna start off with the first track. Now the first track here is actually, let me enlarge everything here. It's actually just a color math. Um, and I picked a random color. I chose for a kind of blue tealish color, as you can see right here. So that's my base. Now what I did was I've placed, so this is actually the color math. What I did was I've placed a mask on there. Now the mask itself is really, really tiny. It's a circular mask that I just created in the opacity layer, uh, in the opacity property of my uh, color math layer. And I just made it really small so that it's just on top of the surface of my phone right here, or uh, this guy's phone. Now then I just feathered it a whole bunch. Uh, I think I even went to about 125. And that way it's really, really soft looking. It's not a hard circle that you see on top of the phone. It's just kind of a light source emitting from it. Once I've done that, I've made an animation with the opacity. Now I could also use the opacity of the mask, but I uh, just used this one. As you can see, it starts glowing a little bit. I started from zero, went to 100, and I also uh, eased my keyframes by right-clicking on them, ease out, and on the second keyframe, I did an ease in. And I just see that the Orlando guy just donated. Thank you so much. This guy has been donating every live stream that we've done before, uh, every live stream that we did. So thank you so much uh, to the Orlando guy. You're at um, six donations right now and we've done six live streams so far. This is the sixth one actually. So guys, definitely check out the Orlando guy's channel. Uh, thank you so much for your donations and your support to this channel. And as I've mentioned before, I also love his channel. So um, yeah, it's, it's good that we as creators support each other, of course. Now I'm gonna check the comment section real quick before we head on to the next thing that I did with this effect. I see a lot of comments about Sabrina Carpenter. Now I don't know who she is actually, so I will have to look her up. Um, can you do the transform effect like Loki? Well, that is not really possible in Premiere unless you have use a lot of external plugins, which you probably have to pay for. Um, that's more likely something that you should do in Adobe After Effects, and it's also not that easy. So um, no, unfortunately, we cannot do it on this channel if we want to have a great look or a great looking effect from it. We can do it like super simple with just a mask or something or maybe even a crop tool and some effects in there, but I wouldn't recommend that. 
Let's see. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, I can't re really pronounce your name. I think it's Mehul Sharma. Um, I'm not gonna get copyright sued because I'm just gonna show the visuals, but um, if I can, I will show just a tiny bit of your drum solo because I loved it, I really, really did. Uh, but that's later on in this live stream. You guys will see what I'm talking about. Um, another one, Sabina Carpenter. Uh, how is Jordi? Jordi, Janik, and Lorenzo are, in, are all in the office. They're editing for um, Copycat Friday, I think, and uh, Creative Tuesday, of course. Uh, I want to send a clip. Yeah, you sure you can still send it. Uh, I'll definitely have a look at them. Uh, my mailbox is open right here on the screen. Um, let me check. What is? It? Why is it that anytime I am scripting my video in Premiere, it usually hangs? That is Premiere will just crash. Why? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean like closed captions, like subtitles? Um, if you're doing that, I'm not really sure. I don't have any problems when I'm doing it. Um, but yeah, Premiere just has some problems where it often crashes. That's just how Premiere is, unfortunately. Uh, I see someone saying uh, that he has problems with a Facebook upload. I don't like Facebook quality at all. It compresses your video so much, I almost never use it to share a, a video. I rather put it on YouTube and just use my YouTube link and share that on Facebook. Um, let me check. Wow, so many comments, guys. Uh, bum, 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 bum. The Aladdin Jin effect. Oh, that's really hard to make in Premiere Pro, guys. Sorry. Um, I will send you my drone footage. Can you color grade it? Yeah, definitely. If you have some drone footage, send it over to our email address. I would love to see that and color grade it. Uh, there were some other shots that I also color graded. So definitely send them to my email address. Uh, What's the, oh, that's a, that's a really important question, guys. Listen carefully. What's the difference between color correcting and color grading? Well, color correcting means that if you have, um, for example, five shots, that you correct them so that they are all on the same base. For instance, if one shot is a little bit more warmer than the other, you try to compensate both so that they are the same um, warmth, okay? Uh, same kind of camera temperature. Same goes for lighting and colors, of course. If one shot is super saturated and the other one is really looking flat, then try to compensate uh, so that they are on the same level. That's color correction, okay? So you get everything to the right um, settings. And also each clip individually, you have to see with the vector scopes in your P Premiere Pro or other editing software or color grading software that the, that, that, that the color scopes are also good. So that the contrast isn't too harsh, that the whites aren't clipping, that the blacks aren't clipping, that, the, that it's not oversaturated or um, that it's not too flat, okay? So that's the entire color correction part. Once that's done, then you can start to color grading. And this is kind of the look and feel that you give to it. So for example, if you want an orange and teal look, then you can make the shadows really dark and tealish and the highlights and midtones more like uh, uh, orange looking uh, color. So that's color grading. For instance, if you want like a horror movie kind of vibe, then you can make it super bluish and dark in the shadows. Um, you can play around maybe with some green tints here and there, um, but color correction is to make sure that everything matches and color grading is the overall look. Okay. So um, I see a lot of people asking, did you use my shot or did you, uh, are you working on my shot? Well guys, uh, I'm really sorry, I forgot all of the names for the people that I've took some shots of. I, 
actually really um, just downloaded every email that I got and used that footage. Honestly, there's not, an, there's, I, I don't think there's any clip that I didn't use. So um, let's go just into Premiere Pro and you will see once your shot is on screen. So let's go back to our Premiere Pro view. So where were we? Okay, so I just created this light emitting source from the phone. I did that with a color mat. This is really simple, guys, and you can use this for a lot of um, effects like this, you know? If you want a specific color on a specific part of your video, just put a color mat on there, make a mask, and play around with the feather and with the opacity. Now the next layer here is uh, a nested layer, and if we go inside there, we see that I put some text here. Let me enable all of the effects. So I just put some text. The text is just wake up. Simple as that. Now, I want it to be a little bit more uh, sci-fi, so I put a glow on it. This is the alpha glow effect. It's an effect that you can just find here in the effects library. Alpha glow, here it is. Um, now, I put the glow to 50%. The brightness I kept at 255 and I just changed the colors, the starting color and ending color to a bluish look, kind of the same as the one that I've used for the color mat. Now, of course, I can change this to whatever I want and that will change the outcome of the effect, of course. As you can see, now it's more of a red uh, looking um, text or glow. And maybe you can use this like if it's an alarm that is kind of a, a caution alarm, like caution, caution, there's a fire somewhere, then you can use the red, but I'm just gonna stick to the blue, so I'm gonna hit Control Z twice until I have my two blues again. And that's just what I did with the Alpha Glow. Nothing more, nothing less, this is just it. Now guys, it could be that if I play this that it doesn't really look the same way as it does now, that's because my resolution is at one fourth, um, because otherwise my playback won't really go really smooth. Okay, so, now this is, I put this on uh, layer number three, by the way, doesn't really matter where I put it. Um, it's just, I don't know, it shifted towards the third layer for some reason, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so once I was finished with the alpha glow effect, I wanted it to look real. And as we can see here in the, um, in the video, he's looking towards it, so it would be a little bit weird if we could read it, because he should be able to read it. So, I used the basic 3D effect and used a swivel of 180 degrees to just turn it around. Simple as that. Uh, if we throw it back to zero, that's the way it is. And then we can just turn it around. Now, as you can see, um, it swivels around this point right here. Doesn't really matter for me. Uh, I just want it to be completely the other side. Also, this is a really cheap looking 3D look. Uh, it's really basic, just as the name says. So I don't recommend using that too much. But just for this, it could work really fine. Okay, so once uh, I've made this, I nested this. Now, why did I nest this? Because I was, I'm, will be using the transform effect. And I've noticed that a lot of times, uh, Premiere Pro has some problems, so that's why I always nest something before I'm going to animate it, okay? That's a good tip that I can give you guys uh, if you wanna start animating. So now I just put some basic effects in there. But now I want to animate that, so that's why I nest it, okay? Once, that nest, once that's nested, I place it here above my color mat, and I place the transform effect on there. Now, what did I do with the transform effect? First of all, I cleaned up my anchor point. Um, I wasn't paying attention before when I made the um, title, but what I had to do was place my anchor point in the middle of the text. That's why if I animate it or scale it, it will scale from the middle, from the center of that text. So what I first did was I used the transform tool to replace my anchor point, placed it in the middle of the text, as you can see right here. And what I then did was I, um, let me go to the beginning here. I let it come up from the screen because, of course, our cell phone is a thing, the kind of technology that is going to start using this signal or this alarm clock, whatever you want to call it. So that's why I um, 
made it go from around this place right here. You can see the blue thingy right here. And it just goes up almost towards where my actual anchor point is. Um, so that's one thing, it's going up. And then I also played around with the scale. So what I did was I went from 0% scale to 100 and that, that way it looks like it's coming out of my cell phone screen right here. Let me just do this away like this. Now then I just waited, I looked at the scene, had a look at what's happening and I saw that this guy actually swiped. So then I was like, oh, okay. So first it comes out of the cell phone, but then he swipes. So what should I do with it? But then I realized that at the end, he smacked the phone again. So it has to go back in. So I had to come up with something new. So that's why I created a second text layer, which is just, I just put a random hour there. Um, this says 755. I put the same effects in there, the alpha glow effect and the basic 3D, nested it, of course, because I wanted to animate it. And at the moment that he swipes, my uh, second layer here is animating its position to the left side, my left side, not his left side, my left side. And at the same time, I'm lowering my scaling back to zero. Now a little bit further, First, I have to enable my track, of course. Let's see if it works, okay. So just as I'm going like this, I placed my text a little bit further with, again, the transform tool. And I scaled it from 0% right here to 100% once it's in the middle of the phone, okay? So I this guy keeps looking at it. He sees, oh my God, it's 7.55 in the morning. Oh gosh, it's so early. You know what? Bam. This is actually just the same. Uh, I mean, this one, this is actually exactly the same as the one in the beginning right here. So instead of going up, this time it goes down back into the phone, scaling from 100 to 0%. And that's all I did with this shot. And to be honest, if you just have a look at the shot as it is, it's kind of boring, nothing's really happening, but once you've placed just a simple text effect on there, animated it, placed a little bit of a color math underneath it to give that um, light emitting source effect, you get this fun kind of hologram clock effect. As you can see, it swipes, oh my God, it's so early, bam. Super easy. Now, uh, if you're asking why do we use that color map? Why do we want the source emitting light? Well, it just gives a more realistic look. If I disable this, you see it's really flat. It's just floating there. It doesn't have any interaction with the phone. But once we've done this, it looks like it's emitting light onto the phone or the phone is emitting light, making that hologram, okay? Now, once again, uh, in the beginning, I made the color map uh, from zero opacity to 100 opacity. At the end, I'm doing exactly the opposite. When he smacks it, I'm going from 100 to zero. Okay, that's just all that I did with this shot. Let me zoom out for a moment. Okay, now I'm gonna close those nested sequences again. And I'm gonna head back to your comments real quick. Ooh, so many comments, guys. Wow, this chat is really, really going. Okay, um, let's have a look. Uh, where was I? Uh, What's the easiest way to get rid of noise? Well, um, I think we have a denoiser effect. Let me check it real quick. No, that's just for the audio. Um, do you mean audio noise or video noise? Because if it's audio noise, we have the denoise effect inside Premiere Pro, which you can use to denoise your audio, but don't overdo it, otherwise it will sound a little bit artificial. Now, if you want to denoise your footage, I would recommend um, Red, Gi Red Giant's denoiser number three. Uh, it's actually a paid plugin, but I use it all the time when my footage is way too noisy. It actually works great, but like I mentioned, you have to pay for it, of course. 
how do you color correct? Because you said you're colorblind. That's a good question. Um, I am color colorblind. I do see colors, but not the entire range of it. So I don't see as much colors as uh, you guys probably do, or as John, uh, Jordi, Janik, and Lorenzo do. But as I mentioned before, I use the vector scope. So let me show you what that looks like. If we head over to the window menu here, we can go to Lumetri scopes, and voila, here we have it. Okay, I'm gonna open my parade as well, this one. And I use these ones to uh, color grade, actually. So what I do is, let me open the Lumetri real quick to color grade the shot. So I, what I first do is I check the um, skin color. So I make a selection with my mask of a part of the skin. Here we go. Then I go to my Lumetri colors. And this is actually the line where you want your skin colors to be. Now it's a little bit too much to the red side. So I'm going to put a little bit of green in there. Here we go. Maybe warm it just a little bit, not too much. OK. And if I now disable this mask, oh, that's the wrong button. Here we go. This looks better already. Let's have a look at the skin tones. Yeah, it looks way more warm and alive. OK, so that's good. Then this is the contrast overall, uh, the color contrast. So I can have a look at the contrast here. OK, this looks quite good. And then I have a look at this right here. Now you can see the zero here and the 100. The 100 is my highlights and whites. Zero is my blacks, okay? So it's kind of really close to this edge right here. So that means if I go a little bit too far, you can already see that the blacks are crushing. So I won't do that. Maybe just play around with a bit with the shadows to get the overall look a little bit lower to that zero part. But then I want this gap right here to be uh, less. So I'm gonna put more highlights in there even a bit more whites. Okay, and if I now go here, bam, you can see a lot of difference already. So now I know that this is color corrected and now I can go ahead, maybe even add a little bit more vibrance or desaturate a little bit more sharpness, whatever. And then I can go ahead and color grade this, okay? So these tools are the ones that I always use when color grading. Okay, that was a really good question, honestly. So after color correcting, in order to color grade, best way should be the adjustment layer, is it? Uh, you can do that, and it's actually a good way. I also did do it that way. I always use an adjustment layer above my footage just because um, you can easily just deactivate that layer to see your true colors. Um, also, it doesn't do any harm. It's a non-destructive layer. It's just placing all the effects on top of there on the layers underneath. So there's actually no problem using an adjustment layer. Um, and also, you know, I can drag it all across my timeline. So I don't have to individually color grade each, each clip, of course, OK? So uh, yeah, I do recommend using an adjustment layer. But you don't have to. But I recommend it. I'm working on an advertisement video editing in After Effects. Oh, really cool. Nice. What kind of advertisement video is it? Please make a tutorial on how to do a multicam edit. Well, that's a good one. Uh, I'll write it down and I'll do one of those in the future. I'm not sure when exactly, but I'll do that. Uh, Oh, apparently I'm using someone's footage. OK, nice. Thank you so much for your footage. Uh, wow, so many comments, guys. Uh, is there any other meta to using green screen or blue screen? Yeah, kind of. You can rotoscope in After Effects, or you can just mask manually, frame per frame. Uh, but if you can, I recommend using a green screen or blue screen. Don't use a yellow screen or a red screen because those colors are coming back in your skin tones. It will not look good at all, OK? Um, can you suggest a camera around $1,000 with 10-bit colors and maybe 4K resolution? 
I don't think there are any cameras out there with 10-bit color range and 4K for that price. I'm sorry. I see someone asking for the Benti K door transition. Well, stay tuned in this live stream because someone used it in the video, which was really cool, but I also made kind of a, an effect like that. I'll show you, you soon, okay? Um, let me just... Uh, send it to the Nino is instead. How do you send the videos to Premiere Basics? How do you send the videos to Premiere Basics? Well, just uh, email them to me. I put the email uh, as a pinned comment right here. Speaking of my email, let's have a look at my email, actually. Woo, okay. Uh, I've received some drone footage. And... Wait, is that the same? Is it the same guy? Yeah, it's the same guy, but it's different footage, I think. Okay, I'll just download it as well. And there's this guy. Okay. This is exciting because I haven't had a look at these uh, clips yet, so who knows what they are, who knows what I can do with them. Now they're currently downloading, so I'm gonna go to my next clip that I've already made and prepared for you guys. So let's have a look. Okay, so this was a second clip. Let me close those panels real quick, source monitor as well. Here we go. So what I just did here, um, honestly, I was a little bit insecure about this clip. I didn't really know what to do with it. Um, but that doesn't mean that I like it, though. No, I mean, that doesn't mean that I don't like it, because I liked it. Um, it's actually a really cool motion heading towards um, the water bottle right here. As you can see right here, I'll just play it for you guys. It's a really cool motion. Um, I don't know if you guys know Daniel Schiffer, who makes a lot of epic B-roll videos on YouTube. It kind of reminded me on his B-roll videos. Um, oh wait, I just received another email. But it's not footage. Oh, this one is footage. Whoa, so many, f wow, okay. Uh, I'll download them later on, okay? Um, good, so where was I? Okay, I was here. So it actually reminded me of Daniel Schiffer. Now, I would use this in an edit with a lot of footage from this water bottle or, or whatever that she's preparing. Maybe she's making a cocktail or uh, another type of drink, whatever. Um, I would like use this, speed ramp it, cut, head over to another shot, cut, speed ramp, you know, the really epic B-roll video. Um, so I didn't have a lot of effects planned on this. Uh, it's just... Um, a little enhancement that I did. So you could, of course, as I just mentioned, do a time remapping to speed ramp it and go like, whoosh, glug, 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 whoosh, glug, 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 you know? That was my uh, sound of uh, pouring water. Really good, right? ASMR. So what I just did actually was I placed a warp stabilizer on it to get a little bit more of a smooth motion. Now, this stabilizer cropped in a lot but I actually kind of liked it. The only thing I didn't like was the kind of shake that it had in the middle. Um, it's not your shot, it's not your fault, it's just the stupid stabilizer from uh, Premiere Pro. But it's because of this stabilizer that, that I got the idea from, hey, it kind of looks like the Daniel Schiffer shot, like wow. So um, that's what I recommend doing. Uh, now I see a quick question about, can you go over the basics of speed ramping? Well, I will show you that. Uh, especially because it's the same in this shot. This is your next shot, by the way. And it's also the same motion. Uh, I also applied a warp stabilizer to it. So you go like this, and it's actually a really fun shot, ending in uh, an entire screen filling shot of this water that is, um, yeah, being poured into the glass or bowl or whatever it is. Um, now, how do we guys speed ramp? So I'm gonna use Alt, and drag to enhance uh, and scroll, sorry, to drag out this track. Then I'm gonna right click here on FX. Now, if this doesn't work, 
right click in the middle of your clip and go to speed duration to just alter the entire speed or go to uh, show clip frames, timer mapping, and then speed. Now, um, we applied, of, or I, I already applied the warp stabilizer to it, so it will not, I will not be able to speed ramp it unless if I nest it. But I'm just gonna delete this, because it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm gonna right click on there, timer map speed. Now we see this line right here. This line is the speed, so it now it's now at 100%. 100% is just regular normal speed, like if I do this. Now, if I would drag that line down towards 25%, it would go like this. This is 25%. If I would drag that line up to maybe 300%, it would go like this, you know? So this line represents your timing and your speed. So what we can do now is either control click which should normally work, but it doesn't for some reason. So normally if you control click, then you will get a keyframe. Now if it doesn't work for one reason, just like uh, it's happening here, then I'm just gonna press P, which brings out my pen tool, and then I can easily place a keyframe on there. For some reason it's not working. What's going on with this shot? Is it timer map though? Yeah, okay, P. What's going on here? No worries, guys. I can fix this because we actually have also the timer mapping option here. Let's see if I can place a keyframe here. Oh, he's just placing them here. Okay. Why isn't he showing my keyframes? That's weird. Okay, maybe it's something. Okay, well, doesn't matter. Well, normally you should have a keyframe here. If we go a bit further, we can place another keyframe. And if we dra then drag this down, this line, it would change the speed. Now, I'm not sure why it isn't doing anything. Let me see if we can maybe nest this shot. Here we go. Right click, timer map speed, P. Hmm. Okay, so for some reason it's not working, which is super weird. Oh, wait, maybe. Nope. That's weird. Okay, so for some reason it isn't working, but apparently. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this shot, but normally you should just put a keyframe there, you drag the line upwards or downwards, and then you will get, um, just as you can see right here, two points that you can um, play around with. And this is actually um, kind of the easing uh, that you can place or that you can make. And then you get this lever and you can make a smooth S-curve with this lever and this will give you a smooth ease um, at the beginning or at the end of your time remapping. Okay, so I'm not sure why this isn't working, guys, but normally it should. Let's move on to our next shot. Okay, so these shots, these were three... Yeah, I think these were three, three shots. Wow, three, three shots. <laughs> uh, I just color graded these, actually. Uh, just the same way that I just told you guys. I actually wanted to, to keep it for this um, video, but I already told you guys. So. Um, I used my vector scopes to clean this shot and give it a nice look because as you can see, it was kind of flat looking. That's also because the sunlight is hitting us uh, in the shot right here. So I just placed a lot of um, warmth in there, a lot of contrast, a lot of saturation. And now we have this nice looking green forest. Now the original footage, although it was kind of flat looking, was also a little bit weird in the blacks. I'm not sure what was going on there, but if I, like for instance, played the shot right here, the blacks aren't that dark, you know? Um, but I also couldn't crush them. I don't want to crush those blacks. So it's kind of a faded look that we got. And the same thing here. Um, also a nice flare here from the sun. I really like it. But once again, I just color graded this. 
from a really flat looking image, as you can see, to a nice contrasty and saturated look. Now I'm not sure what this is filmed on. Uh, my guess is it's either shot on a phone or a DSLR camera, but I'm not sure which one, okay? But as you can see, even if you still have footage looking like this, you can make something terrific with it, guys. You can just play around with some lumetry color, with some basic effects, and that way you can make a super nice shot, even though you think, oh, my shot doesn't look that good, okay? So no worries at all. Okay, here comes a really fun video uh, that I received. It's actually from this young actor, um, but it was already cut up. So it was already a kind of a video. It wasn't just one raw shot. So I wasn't really sure what to do with it. But then I tried playing around with it. So what I did here, I'll drag this forward here. It was like a zoom out of him. But what I was thinking was this cool, you know, those Power Ranger series where they like end up fighting the boss and then they walk away and then there's this big explosion at the, at the background. Well, I kind of wanted to do the same thing with this guy right here because it zooms out, it's like, bam, he's the actor, you know? So that's why I just right clicked here, uh, added a frame hold, that's this layer right here. Um, no, that's not what I did, sorry, sorry, that's not what I did. What I did was I just cut it out here. I went to the last keyframe, I made a mask around him. Yeah, I took my time for that. Uh, as you can see, I placed a mask around him at the last frame, and then I used the track backwards option, which tracked the entire guy with the zoom and everything, and it made all of these keyframes. I just feathered this a bit, and that's how I got this. I thought because it doesn't move a lot that I used the uh, frame holding option, but it wasn't true, guys. Um, now, I do like this shot. Uh, I don't have a shot of an explosion, unfortunately. I can look up one on Storyblocks if you guys want to, but um, you can just easily simply put a stock clip behind it or maybe shoot something yourself. Um, of course, be careful when you're making your own explosions and that way you can get this really super cool shot. Now, what else that I wanted to do um, with this is play around with the glasses maybe. I wasn't really sure what to do with it because yeah, I'm not really sure what the entire um, like meaning of this video is. Uh, is it for like um, a portfolio or something? I'm not sure uh, if you want to send this to agencies or not. But you can always just make a mask. Let me just show you real quick. Uh, wait, we're just going to duplicate this layer first. Alt and drag. And then I'm going to mask around the glasses. like this. It's not entirely good, but it's good enough for what we want to create. And then on the bottom layer, we can play around with some effects, maybe um, RGB, color balance. We can play around with the colors. Oh, of course, we have to invert our mask. Here we go. We can play around with the colors, you know, create anything we want actually. Maybe some kind of red looking glasses. Something like this and then I'm gonna play around with the feather. Uh, maybe around 20 and then I'm gonna expand this a little bit more. So as you can see, you can just play around with this. You can also track this forward here. Uh, now I'm not sure what it will do exactly because there's kind of a a parallel movement here. Yeah, it isn't that good. Um, but as you can see, you can do a lot with this actually. I love um, like the round glasses. I really, really, really love them. Uh, they are really useful to make effects because they are just round. And we have that circular or round masking tool, which makes it super easy to place a mask in there. So that's something that I would do with footage like that. Now, of course, like I mentioned, this is already cut up. This is already a video at its own. So I would just use the raw footage, play around with it, create some effects in those glasses. Um, maybe cut out the guy just like I did here, play some explosion effects uh, behind him, and then 
put it all together into a nice portfolio video. Okay, uh, so something else that I did was with this shot right here. Let me just enable to or disable these tracks real quick. Okay, so as you can see, we have a zoom in here towards, I'm not sure what it is. It's a statue. I think it's from a, a god. I'm not sure. Um, I think this is a shot from India, and I'm not really familiar with the um, Indian religions and gods or God, I'm not sure. Um, so I don't know if it's disrespectful to do something with this. Um, if it is, my honest, uh, I'm my honest regret for it, and I'm really sorry that I did, but I made an effect with it. Uh, what I actually did was I created kind of a Benty K effect because he also plays around with like ornaments that he sees in his shots, like doors opening up, uh, windows opening. Um, I think there was a video of him in Indonesia, I think, where there was like a carving into the ground and it kind of turned around and then it did kind of a movement opened up and then he went in there with a the camera and it showed an entirely different shot. And I kind of liked that idea. So what I did was I made this. Whoop. Okay, and how did I do it? Let's start with the first track that I duplicated here. So I just duplicated by holding Alt and dragging. And I made a mask around the entire um, outer ring of this statue, okay? I also took my time for this. That's why I also did it up front and not now because I knew that I was gonna put some effort and time into this. So I just placed a mask around the entire thing. And then um, I animated it along with the position of the zoom in, okay? Because of course, um, I also made this a um, frame hold. It's not, um, it's not just a moving part of the video. Um, you could try to do that, but it's more difficult like that. So what I also did was right clicked, uh, add frame hold and I used actually that. I wasn't actually um, using an entire duplicate because it wasn't a video duplicate. It was more of an added frame duplicate, if you understand what I mean, okay? If you don't understand it, let me show you real quick. So we have our shot, right click, add frame hold. Of course here. And that's the piece I used. And then um, the bottom piece I just dragged. And then this is my frame hold, okay? So what I did was then I um, animated the position and scale so that it follows along with my zoom. Now, um, you can't see the quality is less here than it is here because this is still the original shot. And of course, when you zoom in with your camera, your quality remains but this is actually the first frame here that is zoomed in. That's why the quality is a little bit less. Now, this didn't really matter to me. Um, I kind of like the way that it looked, okay? So once I made the animation with my position and my scale, I made a rotation and I made a full turn on the entire duration of this zooming in part. Now, the problem was, as you can see here, it goes in front of this bottom part, which isn't really logical. So I duplicated this and uh, I made a new mask, not around the outer ring, but around the inner part. Once again, I took my time for this, put some effort in it, and here I just animated the position and scaling just like I did in this one, in the second layer, okay? So this doesn't have a rotation, it's just so that all of the rotating parts here go behind this, making it a little bit more logical. So that's something that I did with this. I think it's really cool, um, you can use that, because th this is kind of a, a harder shot to do it, it doesn't look ginormously perfect and good, but just look around. If you find something like an object or an ornament or whatever in your shot that you can play around with, um, 
just play around with this. Make a mask, make a mask within that mask, make a new layer, unmask it, rotate it, make a position change, make a scaling change, whatever. Um, yeah. Play around with it. Now, if you want to make this more easier, then take a shot on a tripod or just a, quite a steady shot, not something where you zoom in. Otherwise, you'll have the same problem as me or where you have to um, change the position and scale and animate it. Okay, like this. Now, let me have a quick look at the live chat uh, and at my email real quick. Whoa, so many footage is coming in, guys. Um, okay, let me just download some of you guys' footage real quick. Okay, download. Let's go back. I've got one email asking if I can react to this. I'm not gonna do reactions, guys. I'm just gonna do um, some editing fun and enhancing your footage. Uh, let me check real quick. What do we else do we have? Uh, okay. That's it. Okay, let's have a quick look at the comment section. What were you guys saying while I was editing? Oh my god. So many comments, guys. So many comments. Can you give an idea how the world looks to you? That's such an interesting comment. Thank you for that. What does the world look like to me? Well, actually, I'm a really positive guy. I always smile, I always laugh, I always look at the bright side of life. So for me, the entire world is something like that, just something that we have to discover, something positive. Uh, yeah, that's just how I see it. Are there any free plugins to reduce the noise in video? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there are any free plugins. I know of some paid plugins, but I'm not sure if there are any free plugins, unfortunately. Uh, rendering doesn't work. That's really weird. Can you tell me what's going on when you render your footage or why it isn't working? Do you get like a message, an error message or something? Because that's really curious. Um... Oh yeah, uh, Bavin Paleja. I totally forgot to check out your Halloween video, but I definitely will do that um, once this live stream is over. I totally forgot about it. Sorry for that. Um, but it's good for you that you remind me of it. Sometimes I kind of uh, forget things. In Uncle, you see two shots separately and then they merge together. I'm not entirely sure what the shot is that you're talking about, but it's called compositing. So what it's basically is, is, um, it actually goes back to the early ages of filmmaking. What they did was they made a shot of, let's say, a landscape. Then they put a glass in front of the camera and they painted, for example, a castle or a castle, whatever you want to call it, um, onto the glass, really, really detailed. And in camera, it looked like the castle was actually in the landscape. Um, so that's called compositing. And we can nowadays do that with after Effects, even with Premiere Pro to a certain degree. Um, and that way you can just put multiple things together in one shot. 
Where is Jordi? Well, Jordi is currently in the office editing his Creative Tuesday video. What are your tips for lack of creativity? Well, that's a really good question and a really important question for all creators and video creators, photo creators, whatever out there. Um, nowadays, it's quite hard to get creative, especially with everything that is going on all across the world. There's a lot of negativity. Um, a lot of people have to stay in their homes. They can't go out because of lockdowns, because of the COVID-19 situation. And it's hard for everyone. But how do you stay creative? Well, what I do actually is I read a lot. I read a lot of books, comics, and that way I get inspired. I get certain ideas from a specific section that I read or that I look at, um, or it just gives me kind of this sparkle of like, not really a base idea, but just like this, this keyword, you know? And then I can play around with this keyword. For example, fire. I saw a lot of fire in a comic and I'm just like, can I do something with fire? What can I do with fire? And then your brain starts working, of course. Now, what else can you do? Watch movies, watch TV series, watch TV shows, all of that. I know it can be a little bit of a copycat situation where you're like, oh, I want to do the same thing as they did in that movie. But sometimes you're like, oh, that's nice that they made it that way or that they did that effect, but maybe I can turn it around and make it a little bit more different or maybe create my own version of it. Um, and of course, watch YouTube. There are so many creators on YouTube. Some of them that aren't really discovered yet. Some of them that aren't discovered by you. Um, yeah, there's so many people on this platform and all of them are really creative. Okay, not all of them, but most of them are really creative. So get inspired by those people, of course. Which mic do you use? Good question. It's a Audio-Technica. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact type, but it's from the brand Audio-Technica. Um, Is there a shortcut for speed ramping? No, just the way that I showed you. I mean, it didn't really work properly, but normally it should work. Um, not sure what is going on, but normally it should work. Uh, someone was saying restart Premiere. Yeah, that could work actually. Um, Hey, Jill, Jordy is behind you. What? Was he standing behind me? Really? Uh, <laughs> I can't mask. It never works. Okay, can you explain to me what happens when you try masking? Because I want to figure this one out. What is happening when you try masking? I want to help you. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Let's see at the time. Oh, we're already one hour ahead. Okay, um, yeah, I'm just gonna go a little bit further, guys. Let's do all of the rest. Okay, so let's go to Premiere Pro back again. Uh, let's zoom out here. Okay, so these next shots, I don't know who are they, who they're from. Uh, it's, I think it's from the same guy as the one who sent me this, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I did nothing with this because it's actually great footage to use for a B-roll sequence or for example, this shot right here as an overlay. You know, uh, I'm just gonna cut this section real quick. You can play around with the opacity and blending mode of it. Let's put it here. As you can see, now it creates kind of an overlay, you know, and you can even animate it, of course. Uh, like for instance, let's put it here. Let's toggle an animation and let it go, whoops, all the way up 
there. Okay, let's have a quick look. Now, of course, this was the bottom part of our video, so there's this harsh line. So let's make a mask. Like this. Feather it a bunch. You can still see this part right here. And now we have an overlay. Of course, this should be in the beginning. Woo! Here we go. Nice, right? So um, when you're shooting B-roll like this, don't just play around with cutting with it. Try making an overlay from it or try, um, yeah, tweaking things like flipping it around maybe. Let's see if that works. Um, let's play around with the opacity, for example. Let's play around with the blending mode. See if you can stack some clips above each other. That way you can create some interesting stuff. Okay, the next one, let me show you the raw video. This was actually an effect that this guy made and he made kind of the Doctor Strange effect. Was really good actually, so uh, he's just chilling a little bit and then he's opening a portal. It's behind Now this was good, but there were some mistakes in your shot. Like for instance here, you can clearly see that you're using a mask because the mask is shifting. So keep in mind uh, to get a really nice clean plate where the lighting isn't different. Also, I can see the person coming in frame right here. You can easily change this by doing a little um, scaling, rescaling actually, uh, and that way you don't see that person coming in. Um, but for the rest, I kind of like this effect really. It's really good. I don't know if you made this in After Effects or in Premiere Pro or in something else, um, but it's really cool. Now, the problem that I had was you're quite tan. Uh, and there's also, I think there's some light emitting from this onto your arms, I'm not entirely sure, but you're quite tan and these hands or arms are quite pale. So what I did was I enhanced the colors so that they kind of match with your skin tones. Now, how did I do that? Well, first I played a mask, I made a mask just around these arms so that I don't affect the other parts right here. Then I went into my Illumetry color panel, went to the HSL secondary tool, I selected your skin color. No, sorry, I selected this skin color right here, um, tweaked it so that my, as you can see here, my mask is, or my selection is just these arms and not the parts that are around it. Gave it a lot of blur, otherwise you would still see these harsh lines. So blurred it a bit, put, uh, I disabled the mask. And then I just made uh, an adjustment here to the temperature, to the contrast and to the saturation so that it matched with your skin tones right here. Now, as I said, I can't do a lot about the effect itself because you've already edited this, but um, keep in mind when doing this that your background stays the same. I'm not sure if this is the original background of this clip or that it's still a mask going on here, but there's a big difference between this right here. And you can also see the mask shift uh, here. As you can see. So that's a mistake that you made, but learn from it. Uh, try to, do, to redo it. And uh, if you've really done this part, send it over to me. I'm, I gladly have a look at it. Um, but overall, it looks really good. Okay, then we have the next part, the drum solo from, uh, I forgot about his name. Let me check in the comments. Uh, I think it was Mehul Sharma. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Uh, but this was his drum solo. I'm not sure if you guys can hear the audio. Let me just go a bit further to the real drum part. Okay, so I hope you guys can hear the audio. Um, I'm just gonna disable it for now, mute, because I don't wanna get any copyright issues. But uh, let me tell you that this was really, really nice. Uh, the drum solo at itself, I really liked it. Uh, I also checked it on YouTube actually. Um, 
So yeah, um, it was really good. But what did I do with it? Well, I don't know if you guys know SingStar or any of those uh, games where you have to sing or dance or make music to a specific beat. Every time you hit the beat, there's a color, you know? And you can make like animations here, um, but that's a bit too hard to do in Premiere Pro. I like animations going from there, like um, moving things and lines and stuff. That's something that you can do in After Effects. But what I did was I've placed, um, I uh, made a the, the duplicate of this layer by holding Alt and dragging. That's this one right here. And then I've actually, let me show you real quick. I've made a, a correction to it with the Lumetri color so that the blacks are way more black than, uh, than originally. So this is the original footage, this is it. Now I'm thinking I can even do another thing that I didn't do was go to the curves, select my blacks here and bring it all the way down just as with the highlights. That way my blacks aren't really saturated and all the shadow parts are really dark shadows, not with a color tint to it. Uh, so I kind of forgot to do that. It's popping in my mind right now. What I then did was I placed a luma key effect, which essentially, let me disable the mask, which essentially um, made a hole in all the black parts because I played around with the threshold. Now if I open this layer right here, you will see it more clearly. So all of the black parts are gone and you can now see the underlying layer. But what I did was I've made one for each individual um, part of your drum. Now, once again, just like with the glasses before, these are round, so it's really easy. I've just placed a round uh, mask on there. Let me control Z right here until I've got uh, my mask again. Yeah, here it is. So I've played a mask here and I did that for, uh, I think this one as well, yes. And also for this one right here. Uh, didn't do all of them, I uh, just wanted to show the effect that you can make with it. So these are kind of holes inside of that upper shot now. Then I've placed an adjustment layer on the layer underneath and I put the four color gradient on there. Now as I will disable this, this is the four color gradient. It's just four colors creating a smooth gradient, obviously. So once I did uh, place it here, you can see the colors coming um, underneath the holes that I've actually made in the upper shot. Now what I would do with this, I didn't do it um, just yet, but what I could do with this, but I have to play the audio there for, um, on every time you hit one of those pads, or I'm not sure what you call them, every time you hit it, I will place a cut, for example here, and then I will delete this part. And for example, when you, let me see which one do you hit? Oh, okay, so you're going to hit this one right here. Let's have a look frame per frame. Let's disable these real quick. Bam, you hit this one right here. I place a cut. I delete this part. And at the part where you hit the pad, yeah, okay, this we have to delete as well. Okay, but of course you can disable the ones you don't use. So I think it's this one and this one. Bam. The color comes when you hit it. Okay, so you can play around with that, create an effect like every time you hit one of the pads of the drum, or one of the snares or the hi-hats, that one I do know. Uh, every time you hit that one, um, there is uh, a color coming through, okay? And you can either play around with the, with the mask here so that it kind of pops up, but then fades away, pops up, fades away, another one pops up, fades away, you know, like That's my beatboxing skills. <laughs> okay, so that's the thing that I did with your clip, which was honestly a really good drum solo. 
Um, next we have. Okay, this this guy actually uh, did something nice as well. He let me alter it real quick. This is his version of the effect. So he wants to take that piece, but it suddenly moves towards there. Then he wants to take that one, moves towards here. Real nice. And he also provided me with the raw footage. So he actually made a clean plate, really important. And then he actually placed three um, parts on it. He made sure that it didn't go over the part. Uh, also with the shadows, that there wasn't a lot of shadows. So he really put some thought in it. Um, now, what I would do maybe is actually use this as a clean plate and then just mask one of those instead of putting tree on there and animate it with the transform tool. Uh, for example, let's do that real quick. So I'm going to make a circular mask around this one. Let's feather that a bunch. Okay, something like this. And we go here. This one is going to be a frame hold. And this is going to be a frame hold as well. And now we can use this. And I'm not sure if it's going to work. It could be that we are going to have to nest this, but let me try first. Let's see. We disable the shutter angle. We put 180 to create our own motion blur. We put some scales there. Oh, actually, the scale doesn't have to be there. Put a keyframe for the position, move around, and then. Oh, is it a hole? Does it have to be inverted? Why isn't it? Oh, of course. Wait. I will have to nest this one. Let me double check. Yes, OK. Let's nest it. And now we can do the transform effect. Um, let me see. Position. Whoop. Position. Bam. Of course, ease out and ease in. And that way, let me put them closer together so that it goes faster. That way, your thingy will move all the way to the other side. Now, of course, you can see that there is a kind of a, a lighting shift. So you can play around with the opacity or with the mask of your, um, where was it here? With the mask of your shot so you can feather it even more. Um, what I also did was I enhanced the upper, so I made a duplicate. I enhanced it with the color keys or with the Lumetri color actually, um, so that it's really, really vibrant green. And that way I use the ultra key effect to green screen that green. And that way I got kind of a, a hole in there as well. And then I could place an adjustment layer there. And that way um, your final video has a, a different background. So that's something you can do with that as well. But I really like the overall idea of your of your um, video. It was really nice. Let's have a quick look at the comment section real quick. Let's go. Oh, uh, so you were asking if I could provide the audio of your clip? Well, I'm not sure if I can. If you Wait, I think wait a long Let's see. Can you guys? guys can hear it. I'm not going to play the entire thing. Otherwise, we'll get a copyright strike. Um, but guys, definitely check out uh, Mehul Sharma's uh, YouTube channel because his drumming video is also on his YouTube. I've checked it there. It's super nice. So definitely uh, have a look at that. Let me check the chat real quick. Uh...
apparently there was some lag in the stream. Um, sorry for that, guys. <laughs> Uh, I see some questions about the gaming montage. I actually don't have any experience doing that, making that. Um, I'm not really a, much of a gamer myself. I only play Call of Duty Warzone and um, Pokemon Go on my iPhone. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, I used to be a, more of a PlayStation gamer where I played like Grand Theft Auto and Need for Speed and all of those games. But nowadays I just play Call of Duty Warzone on my PlayStation as well. Uh, okay, uh, someone is saying that he's sending me some raw footage. Oh, here you go. Let's see if I can download it, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go real quick to the last couple of shots that I've have that I have in my Premiere Pro, and then I will go over the ones that I've just downloaded but real quick because we don't have a lot of time anymore. Um, so the next shot of this guy, this is insane, guys. Have a look at this. Super dope, super nice. Honestly, oh my god. I'm a dancer myself, but this is kind of next level. I mean, stuff like this I can't do. Um, now, what would I do? Wait, there's a, an auto delay someone is saying. Could be because I'm downloading, guys. So let's have a look at the downloads real quick. Whoops. Let me check. Let's go to downloads. Where is it? My downloads folder or right here. Could be that I'm still downloading some footage and that's why it's uh, going slow. So I'm sorry guys if there is any lag. Uh, it could be because of the downloads. But anyway, I'm gonna proceed here. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so this shot right here, it's actually super cool, but I would suggest two things. First, try not placing your camera onto the floor here because this is kind of the um, bouncy floor. And as you can see, when you start jumping off here in the sky, it creates kind of a camera shake, which is kind of disturbing. And same when you're landing here. Now next, I would try to do this in front of either a blue screen or a black or a, um, a green screen actually so that you can easily just cut the background out because you're all in black and white and you can then use this clip anywhere you want to create some cool effects. Um, another thing that I could do but I would do that in After Effects not in Premiere Pro is create some kind of elements coming out of your foot here so that when you're turning like this it would create like a kind of a stroke of fire coming out of it like uh, you know the series the last airbender avatar uh, like kind of a firebender um, now you've also made the this one I think let me put this one away um, which is also a super cool shot have a look at this guys so he first does a flip and then another flip and the camera movement is super dope super nice but I see a lot of blue stuff here, so I tried making a key out of it, but footage isn't that good because there's too much on screen that isn't blue. It's really hard to target all of the blues in here. Uh, I could play around with the saturation maybe a bit, but try to find a clean blue background with the floor as well, or maybe green, or maybe even a white background. Maybe you can use the Luma key then. Uh, it would be cool to create an outline of you guys so that we can play around with some effects on you. Um, and another thing that I could do, but it's also in After Effects, and there's actually uh, a, an Instagrammer who makes super cool videos like that is, um, I think it's his name is Sergio BRKN, I'm not entirely sure, but what he basically does is he traces your movement 
like really draws uh, a figurine. Like for example, use a lot of Naruto stuff. So for example, once you're doing the stance here, you're becoming kind of a Naruto character. Then this is gonna be all animated inside After Effects, all like hand-drawn animation, Naruto style. And then at the end, um, it will become a complete drawing. He can create his own effects with that and end with this shot of you back landing on there. Okay, so that's uh, what I would do with those shots. Then we have this super awesome Thug Life, which actually was super cool. I really liked your head uh, movements or head dance or whatever you want to call it. It's super cool. I wish I could do it. Um, is there like a trick to it? Do you have like a special kind of cap or something? Because it's really cool. And then at the end, of course, he uses the Tug Life meme to uh, create this uh, ending effect. Now, this is actually super simple, guys. I've also, uh, let me check where I put them. I think I placed them here. Oop, here we go. Let's see. Oh, so those are the glasses from Tug Life. Uh, let's see if I can place them on here. Yeah. So it's just a simple PNG picture uh, that you can animate uh, with a position or with a transform if you want, with a transform effect. You can just play around with this, like this, and then there is a movement in there, okay? Um, if you click on the motion itself, it will create this bounding box and this way you can easily create the, the path that it has to go. So for example, like this, it goes to there really slow and whoosh, really fast, okay? Same thing, I think this is the chain, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, oh no, this is just the Tug Life logo, but I also have the chain, I think. Uh, doesn't really matter. So that's how you can create your own Tug Life meme. Now, I actually wanted to do that for a tutorial, but the actual tutorial would last around, I don't know, 30 seconds or something. So it would be a little bit vague, a little bit weird. So that's why I didn't really do that. Uh, let's go to our last video that we have inside Premiere here already. Uh, this is already an edit that is made, which was really cool. It's kind of a travel video, but there was this one effect that I really want to highlight, guys. Um, also, this guy uses a lot of sound effects, really nice. Sometimes they are a little bit too loud to work on your sound mixing, but it was really good overall. Now, this shot right here was super cool. I actually didn't realize, but this is fake because this is from this shot, which was a really cool transition. The only thing that gave it away uh, was the masking or the feather on this section because here it's perfect. Here, I really can't see if it's real or not, but it's this part right here that gave it away. But I really love the transition that you've made here. And then there's this transition. And this is completely inspired by Ben TK. I've seen this a lot in his travel videos. It's actually going through a window and opening the window. As I play this frame by frame, you can clearly see it. Now, I'm not sure if you've made this in After Effects or in Premiere Pro. Um, my guess is Premiere Pro, but I'm not entirely sure. But it's really well done, but it could be a little bit better. Work at the details of it, but overall, it's really, really nice. Furthermore, everything here is awesome. I really liked it. Um, maybe just the ending could be a little bit less harsh, if you know what I mean. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at all of the new footage that we've received. I'm gonna go over it really quick, guys, because I don't have a lot of time anymore. So uh, I see what I can do. Uh, I'm quickly gonna make a new footage bin. Uh, let me drag all of that in there. Okay, no problem. Let's have a look. I'm gonna create a new timeline real quick. New, here we go. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at, guys, but it looks quite funny. Uh, okay, let me first have a really quick uh, look at the 
comment section again. Let's see, where are you? Oh, here. Um, can you do the Loki transformation effect? I've already answered that. It's really hard to do in Premiere Pro, so sorry. Uh, you'll have to find an After Effects tutorial for that, unfortunately. Uh, sorry, guys, if the sound is not completely synchronized. Um, I thought there weren't any lag problems anymore, but apparently there are. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, let's have a look. Okay. I think I answered most of the questions already. Oh, I see this question. Have you ever tried to edit while being big? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. I'm not really familiar with that question. Uh, while being bait, I'm not entirely sure what it means. But if I think what it means, then no. <laughs> um, colometry, I already got your shot. I think it's already in my selection here. So we'll kind of have a look at that. Um, Your audio is not sync. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not sure what is happening with the audio. I wish I could just snap my finger and make it all right. But unfortunately, it, I think it's the lag, some kind of the connection between Streamlabs and the um, YouTube uh, live stream session thing. Okay, let's have a look at our new clips. I'm going to first start off with this one. This is a shot of someone drawing. Oh, I see what you did there. This is a raw footage of a Zack King-like effect. Okay. So actually, your first shot has to end here out point and then we go further in time and it should start around here in point and then if we place these two together you'll create uh, okay so there's a small problem here uh, you didn't shoot this on a tripod so this makes it harder to match uh, what we can do is, let's have a look here. I'm gonna drag this on top of there. I'm gonna um, lower the opacity. And let's have a look if we can reposition you to the right spot. Okay, so this is kind of the right spot, but I think I need some more movement in there. Yes, here we go. Here we go. So what I've done is I just lowered the opacity of the last clip and I've placed it on top of there to line it up. And that way I could easily fix the issue here. Now, as you can see, uh, if they're above each other, you can still see this little corner, but it doesn't really give it away that much, but it, once it's here, you can see the black corners. You can just take the both, nest them, and then go here and make sure that this part where you see the black bars uh, is a little bit more scaled, maybe 105% and a little bit more repositioned. And that way you won't see that we've used two cuts. Fun effect also, Zach King inspired. Okay, so let's see what else do we have. How to warm up for a game? I'm not sure <laughs> what this is exactly. It's super funny. 
Oh, it's like a funny edit, probably. Hey, the guy's dancing. Ooh, damn. Doing break dance. It's really fun. Actually, I really love your edit. I love the um, kind of uh, strobing effect that you can see here. Like the lighting is popping each time. I love the fact that you flip these. Uh, I actually wouldn't alter anything about this. It's quite good already. Uh, maybe here you can play around with it, maybe mask him out. Um, I've made a tutorial about that actually, like the intro, the character introduction, where you actually make a freeze frame of this, you cut him out, you place a different background, you animate it using the position and scale, and then you create that kind of parallax effect. It takes a bit of time, so I'm not gonna do it right now, but that's something that you could do with this part, like um, make it an introduction of this shot, like he smiles, it freezes, kind of a parallax animation, a title comes in where it says like, um, funny warm-up guy or whatever, or whatever his name is, and then it just proceeds to this video. Next, uh, Bellum, I think, yeah, here, Bellum Videos, he's the one who donated last time. Oh, I can't hear the audio because, uh, wait, let me check. Can I hear my audio? Mm, nope. Okay, so I can't hear the audio, unfortunately, because you're obviously saying something. Um, Bellum, I know you're still watching probably, can you leave uh, a chat or a comment what you're actually saying here because I'm really curious. Uh, you've green screened this and it's actually really well done. Only here there's a little, 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 little corner here where it's not that good, but overall it looks really good. It's really fun, yeah, nice. Okay, uh, but let me know I just say, I love Premier Race. Oh, thanks, man, thanks, thanks a lot. I love you too, man, I love you too. It looks really good. Okay, next we have the cube disintegration. Okay, this is good, this is nice, but let me tell you what's wrong here. First of all, I can clearly see a masking line here, so try to feather it and try to um, color correct it. But I clearly see a color and lighting difference here, so that's something that you should definitely do. Also, get rid of that line by feathering it. Um, then next is the laser itself. You can actually make it go faster. And actually, uh, there's a part that remains here at its origin, uh, but that actually shouldn't happen. For example, when I throw this, Wait, let me put you in full screen mode here. If I throw this, you can clearly see that my point of origin doesn't stay here. All of it, so the entire laser, imagine that this is a laser, should go like this, and the point of origin is still here. Um, that's a quick tip that I can give. Um, yeah, I see a lot of Star Wars movies and, and series. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and that's also something that they also use as the laser. Now, if you do want to have a laser origin that sticks, then keep your finger at that position. For example, the Dragon Ball saga, who had the Kamehameha and all of that, uh, they keep their hands and that point of origin is still here. So then it, that way it's more uh, logical that it's sticking to that position, okay? For the rest, it's super nice. I'm not entirely sure how you made this effect, probably in After Effects, because I don't think it's possible in um, in Premiere Pro, but it's really well done. The only thing is there is a mask going here. Um, that's not that good because it's a really harsh line, so once again, I would feather it, maybe play around with a little bit of fractal noise or something in the mask so that it's a little bit more um, less one line, but more like a shape, you know? Um, but overall, it's really cool. Really nice. Great idea, actually. Okay, next we have a drone shot. Or, no, wait, that's a DJI pocket shot. 
Um, yeah, I think you probably want to have this color graded. I'm gonna leave this for a moment because I already talked about the color grading section of this video. So, you know, I uh, just use the Lumetri scopes to get it really good. Um, I'm first gonna see if there are any other things here that I can talk about. If not, then we're just gonna color grade this. So we also have this shot right here, which is also from a DJI Pocket or DJI Osmo, or whatever, I think, because it says DJI right here. Um, but the colors actually do look really good. I think it only needs a little bit more saturation and maybe just play around a little bit with the highlights, the shadows, the blacks and the whites, but just a tiny bit. Don't overdo it. Uh, use the scopes and definitely um, get a great result from this. Next one, we have this cute little kid right here. I'm not entirely sure what he's saying, so I'm not sure what kind of video this is. But, you know, it's something that, that, that I would do with this shot right here is actually inspired by my Halloween video, the Halloween tutorial that we've posted. Um, he has big eyes, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, he's still young. Little children often have those uh, really big eyes. When we get older, our eyelids become a little bit more goofy and because of all the tiredness and all the hard work, of course. Eh? So um, it's easy to mask. He also keeps his eyes open for quite a long time here. So we can easily make a mask there, make a cool effect with his eyes. We can uh, take a screenshot of this or, or make a frame hold, cut him out. He's, he doesn't have a lot of hair sticking out, so it's really easy to make a clean mask from him place a background beneath it, make a cool introduction uh, with this guy. Um, again, I'm not sure what the purpose of this video is, but if it's for some kind of fun effect, then you can do all of that. What's this? Oh, wow, okay, that's cool. Uh, this is actually an effect that we've made um, in the Cine Battle series uh, last year on uh, Cinecom. So, I'm not gonna go over this effect because I want you guys to guess how it's made. Um, so definitely go to the Cinecom ch uh, channel, have a look at the Cine Battle. I'm not sure which one it was, but it was inspired by someone else who actually also made this uh, and sent it over to us and we were really inspired by it. So that's why we decided to turn it into a Cine Battle where Jordi and Janik had to compete against each other. Super cool. Thanks for sending in that effect. Uh, it really shows how creative you are. And it's actually really hard because there's a camera shake in there and you have like this um, reflection and all of it. So I'm actually really amazed by the result, honestly. Um, the only thing I would do is just color grade it a little bit more so it gets a little bit more contrasty and poppy. The next shot uh, is a drone shot, I think. Uh, it's probably also for the color grading, same here. Oh, this is also from a DJI, I can tell. I also have a DJI Mavic at home and I have a DJI Mavic 2 as well. I recognize these colors and these, I don't know, there's some kind of special um, sharpness to it. It's, it's not that sharp, but it's not blurry. It's, it's a little bit weird. Uh, I, I have the same problem with my drone. Um, now, once again, for getting a clean grade from this, a, co a clean color grade, I would highly recommend using the vector scopes um, as shown before. So just here, Lumetri scopes, and use these to color grade your footage. Let's have a look at this. Okay, that's really well done. I think this is also made in After Effects probably. Um, now, this thing I like, I really like the dance that she's doing here. The bulge effect, I, I'm not really a fan of it, but um, I, would, I wouldn't overdo it. I think it's a little bit more, I think it's a little bit too overdone here, but this part is a little bit better. So I would maybe resize it up just a tiny bit so that it's like this at its max, and then it can go maybe to her upper body part instead of her face, just 
her upper body part like bam bam and then maybe her face okay uh, and then maybe even her flame at the end but this last part right here this I really like um, of course you've got a really clean sky to work with but this is actually super nice especially the kind of bounce effect you've got in there um, so I really recommend guys if you have like a statue or a toy or a, maybe a miniature version of a statue place it outside get your camera try to get a clean background that's what the guy also had here it's really nice that he has a clean background there are no planes no birds no trees visible there's not a harsh contrast with all uh, of all of the clouds and like a really blue sky it's a really like overcast weather right here so it's the most perfect um, background to work with to create an effect like this um, you can create an after effects not in premiere you can create an easy um, clean plate with this background you can just take a piece from here and place it underneath there if you mask the statue of liberty out so you can create a lot with this and um, yeah it looks really cool super creative once again last part oh I think the last one is the same Zack King effect why doesn't it open Oh, okay that's my sequence okay <laughs> uh, okay guys so that was it um, oh I just see that this is the same guy who made the cubus disintegration and the glass disappearing and something else as well but I don't think I have that shot uh, downloaded but I'm not gonna download it uh, I'm gonna wrap it up here guys um, let's see if do you guys still have some questions left let me check in the comment section real quick you're saying that you don't know what baked is well I don't know but I think I understand what you're trying to say I think I know what it means so yeah I think I know but I'm not entirely sure um, let's see please teach how to import with no degrading normally when you just import your footage you have no problem at all with quality loss so normally if you just go into Premiere Pro and import into the project panel there shouldn't be any quality loss uh, let's see let's see can you do any superhero effect on Premiere Pro yes we can do that not now of course but there are a lot of superhero effects you can make easily in Premiere Pro not always the best version of it but um, like for instance the the Ant-Man effect you can easily create that in um, Premiere Pro or yeah, you have Ant-Man, but you of course also have Giant-Man where he's like super big. So you can also do that. Um, you can turn yourself invisible. There are multiple things that you can do, but if you want to get really advanced, you should uh, use Adobe After Effects. Would you say that After Effects is worth it to learn after you have a complete mastery of Premiere Pro? Definitely, definitely. Premiere has its limitations. There's so much that isn't possible within Premiere. So I definitely recommend learning Adobe After Effects. The back is transparent at the beginning. I'm not sure where you guys were talking about what bag were you talking about I don't see a bag anywhere but maybe I just can't really see it um let's see what else do we have do you make a sweet to the amazing video where you kill the evil Jordy um, you mean the Star Wars video right um well we did use a lot of effects there we used after effects we used red giant we used cinema 4d we used um 
yeah, we just used Premiere Pro for the editing part, actually, just uh, cutting up scenes and everything and the color grading. But all the rest was done um, in After Effects. And uh, there is like a, not really the TIE Fighter, but kind of inspired um, spaceship. And that's actually in, made in Cinema 4D um, by Ines Alea, who is also a YouTuber, also from Belgium. Okay, so apparently the guy also uh, sent over the final version of his second style video. Um, I'm not gonna download it because there are still some lagging problems, I think, and I don't wanna have some new lagging or extreme worse or lagging. So um, maybe you can put it on YouTube. I don't know if you have it on your YouTube channel. Uh, definitely post it on there and um, yeah, then everyone can ch just check it out on your YouTube. I'm gonna wrap it up guys thank you so much for sending in your footage i hope you guys really enjoyed what i did with it i hope you guys learned from it and maybe um, can create some new versions from it or alter your versions or whatever um yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed it sorry for the lag once again and i hope to see you guys wednesday for a new tutorial it's gonna be a short one an easy one but a really handy and useful one and if not then i'll see you guys next monday for another live stream i'm not sure what we're gonna do just yet but it's gonna be magical okay i'll see you guys next week and as always stay creative